Yup, that is the newest Vivo V30. Hey guys, it's your Tech Girl Mary and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Yes, napakaganda ng intro natin dahil ang ganda rin ng bagong smartphone ng Vivo. Intro pa lang ng review video natin. Alam niyo agad na maganda yung naging experience ko sa bagong mid-range phone nila. And again, partida, hindi pa ito yung pro version. Pero huwag kayong mag because I will still be doing a separate video for the Vivo V30 Pro. It's just that late kasi siyang dumating. Kaya inuna ko na munang i-review yung Vivo V30 from which I've been using for the past two weeks. And yup, tama yung narinig nyo. Dalawa yung bagong smartphone nila sa kanilang V series lineup. But in other countries, meron ding Vivo V30 Lite. Pero again, dito sa Pilipinas, dalawa yung nilaunch nila. If I were to describe the Vivo V30 in one word, that would be Fresh. Alam natin lahat na halos pare-parehas na yung design ng mga smartphones ngayon, lalo na ng mga mid-range devices. Halos same lang din ang offering nila, pero kanya-kanyang gimmick na lang kung paano sila magsa-stand out on their own features. This Vivo V30's aesthetic is very refreshing. Manipes and very lightweight yung device, and of course, very elegant. It has a curved glass back that has a very subtle patterns of a petal. Actually, iba-iba yung pattern niya, giving each model a unique personality. So yes, if you like smartphones with sleek appearance, you will definitely like this. Next stand out siya in a sea of thick and bulky devices just like what we previously featured on this YouTube etong A55 5G ng Samsung. It also weighs at 186 grams. Yes, it is that light. Despite it having a 6.78 inch AMOLED screen and a 5000 milliamp hour of battery capacity. Probably one of the lightest smartphones available right now. The device also has a glass back with plastic frame that features a square camera setup and of course, a flash housing that is also in the same size of its camera housing. And since nasa usapang cameras na rin naman niya tayo, I'm sure ito yung pinunta niyo sa kanya. Tingnan natin. Before we talk about the rear cameras, meron siyang LED flash with aura light surrounding. Which is according to Vivo, ang tawag nila dito is view catcher. Nag-glow yung LED square flash niya from white, yellow, and orange to red. By the way, baka nag expect kayo na yung Vivo V30 is also co-engineered with Zeiss. Though it is in the same series, yung V30 Pro lang po guys yung merong Zeiss partnership. But that doesn't mean that the cameras cannot perform. It has two equal 50 megapixels camera, one for the main shooter and one for the ultra wide shots. That's it. Two cameras, exactly how I like it. According to the brand, yung main camera niya guys features a true color, a camera bionic spectrum VCS technology, na nagpo produce ng vibrant and colorful images. And I like the way they did this. Though they said that it will produce vibrant and colorful images, hindi ganun ka oversaturated yung output niya, which is exactly how I like it as well. It still has that natural tone. Mapa wide or ultra wide man ito. And even though it doesn't have a dedicated telephoto camera, the two times digital zoom are also perfectly fine. Now, in case na hindi kayo masyadong fan ng saturated colors, may dalawa pa siyang color modes na pwede niyong piliin sa kanyang camera interface which is textured and natural. These color modes can also be used kung kayo ay mag-zoom in or even by using the ultra wide camera. Now, let's talk about the features of the Aura Light. Kung mapapansin nyo, it's bigger now compared to previous iteration niya and definitely mas okay when it comes to capturing yung mga faces or even whole body shots, lalo na sa mga low light scenarios. And speaking of the night mode, if we were to go to its camera app, there are options like Astro, Super Moon, and of course, the Panorama Night. On the top left, nandito naman yung option for us to use the Aura Light. 
we can choose the aura light always on or the off. And in here, we can access the temperature slider. Another highlight that I want to talk about, guys, is the portrait mode. Kung mapapansin niyo yung mga sample photos natin, it did an amazing job of keeping a sharp focus sa ating subject and naturally creating a bokeh blur effect sa background. Now, for the selfie camera, I think you will also appreciate this for having a 50 megapixel sensor with autofocus and a 92 degree field of view. We get to have three options when it comes to taking selfies. We have 1x, 2x, and of course the 0.8x for taking group selfies. Now for taking videos, this device can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Actually, video quality is really good and on par with other rival branded phones with of course the same price range. There is also an ultra stabilization mode but just like any other mid-range phones, this will limit your resolution to 1080p. Overall, yung video footages, I really like the contrast and I like that the 4K footages are not too vibrant. Now that you already know how the camera will perform in real world, kamusta naman yung display niya, Mary? To be honest, I also really like it. It delivered me a good viewing experience. I think they used a really good quality of AMOLED panel here. And yung peak brightness niya kayang umabot up to 2,800 nits. Which is really, really good outdoors. Responsive din yung kanyang touch input. And I think this is also because of the high refresh rate, delivering a smooth browsing experience. Very even and thin then yung kanyang bezels, providing us a really good viewing experience. But given na uh, curved nga yung kanyang likod, even the display, and having a matte finish panel, I have to be honest, medyo may kadulasan lang yung device. It doesn't have the same grip na nakukuha natin sa mga smartphones na may leather-like finish or yung may mga textured back. So you might wanna put a clear case Buti na lang may kasama rin sa kanyang box to had additional grip. I think the only issue here, lalo na doon sa mga mahilig mag bench watch like me, is the lack of dual speaker. Siyempre, consider natin yung price point niya and pang ilang smartphone na ba nila to, hindi pa rin ganun ka-immersive yung experience. But the loudness is there, don't get me wrong, medyo bitin lang talaga sa part na to. Now, dito kayo matutuwa. This smartphone, the Vivo V30, is powered by a Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor. And again, this is equipped with a 12 gig of RAM. During my entire review period, guys, ang ganda ng naging performance na binigay niya sa akin. Wala ako masyadong issues na maikomplain sa kanya. I think this phone can handle everything. Hindi lang yung mga day-to-day -day task natin or pag-switch ng applications, but even handling AAA games. Despite it being a thin device, I think they were still able to put a vapor cool chamber to ensure na hindi masyadong mag-overheat yung device. And from what I know, itong devices ng Vivo, including the V30 Pro, will get two major OS updates and three years of security patches. Well, not as long as what Samsung is usually offering us with their A-series, but to be honest with how fast they release their smartphones, ngayon kasi guys, parang halos every six to eight months yung pagitan. I think most owners din naman ng ganitong series ng Vivo usually upgrade from two to three years in time. Magandang option rin to, lalo na kung very specific kayo with branding, Considering na yung pro version ng device na to opted for a MediaTek chipset, and again, this one has a Snapdragon 1. Though alam ko namang magkaiba rin ng level yung output nila, it still is worth pointing out. Now, in terms of battery and charging, alam nyo nakakatuwa kasi parehas na parehas siya doon sa pro unit niya. Same 5000mAh and same support with 80 watts fast charging. And the bump in battery size, guys, also makes a big difference. If you remember last year, no, Vivo V29 lang din yung nilaunch nila here in the Philippines. Kaya rin, alalang-alala ko pa yung specifications nun. And one of the things that made me disappointed on that device is yung 
maliit nga na battery capacity niya which also translated in real world a shorter battery usage. Now I get to have a full day of battery especially whenever I use the smart switch for refresh rate and kapag naka-disable din yung always on display. Now with the bundled 80 watts charger guys sa kanyang box, we were able to get 59% of charge in just 30 minutes. And roughly, guys, around 47 minutes naman to fully charge it. Now, I think with so many smartphones, especially yung mga phone na nasa ganito halos na price segment, Vivo V35G will be a refreshing option. Very striking kasi yung design niya, which makes it stand out more. Tapos yung mga mahilig pang mag-selfie and even taking photos na nagahanap din ng very sleek and simple Smartphone experience, maa-appreciate din ito. Though again, it doesn't have that telephoto lens na present doon sa previous phone that we reviewed, which is the Realme 11 Pro Plus. Kung hindi kayo masyadong fan ng mga phone na makakapal, mabigat, and even having thick bezels, maa-appreciate nyo rin itong Vivo V30. But then, if you want more, especially a good audio experience, a more capable chipset, yung tipong gusto mo pang malakas ang games yung nilalaro mo sa kanya, you might wanna wait for my Vivo V30 Pro review or opt for other devices that can give you more. But as of now with its pricing, I really think this smartphone from Vivo is a good choice as well. So yes, it's a simple smartphone that will deliver you both aesthetics and functionality and of course the price point. I think the Vivo V30 5G has what it takes to be the top of your choices. Anyway, that's basically it. Abangan nyo yung Vivo V30 Pro review natin that is coming next week. Again, it's your tech girl Mary and see you in our next video. Bye!